Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily. It's Monday, June 6th, here with Jason Sagini. I'm Nick Fershaw, and Jay, let's take a look back at some of the biggest storylines in MLS over the weekend and start with some of the young players that did very well for themselves over the weekend. Uh, with DC United going out to uh, LA on Friday night, a couple youngsters step up, a very big scoreless draw against the Galaxy. Yeah, when Ben Olsen put out a lineup with three rookies starting on the back line, you had to worry for DC against an LA Galaxy team that's been one of the best teams in MLS this year. But Perry Kitchen, Chris Korb, and Ethan White all came through for Ben Olsen. They got a shutout. They ended up with a 0-0 draw. Could have been better for D.C. They had a couple good chances. But D.C. now quietly in third place in the Eastern Conference. And atop that Eastern Conference, uh, the Philadelphia Union, but another big matchup in the East over the weekend, the New York Red Bulls and the Columbus Crew. And, Jay, the New York Red Bulls victimized by two Columbus Crew youngsters. They get a late goal for a 1-1 draw. Yeah, it was Justin Merrim coming on as a second-half substitute, feeding the ball for Rick, Rich Balshin to finish it for Columbus, get the 1-1 draw. If you watch this game, New York dominated the game. They had all the chances. They kind of went into cruise control, I think, a little bit too early with a 1-0 lead and didn't really uh, get that second goal that they needed. Medi Bellucci had a chance to take it to the corner and finish the game, gave it up on that same play that Columbus came down, and Merrim made him pay. An impressive result for the crew uh, on the road. Let's switch out to the west uh, where Real Salt Lake gets a 2-0 win over the Vancouver Whitecaps. And it's Gene Alexander, the youngster that they've plugged into the lineup, who gets the big play. Yeah, for Real Salt Lake, the, the worry has been how are they going to score. Since Javier Morales went down, it hasn't been very good in terms of their offensive flow. But Gene Alexander comes in there, does very well, gets a nice goal on the, on the first one, beating the offside trap, and then setting up Fabian Espindola later in the game. Another big win out west, uh, Chivas USA with a 1-0 win over the Portland Timbers. Marcos Mondaini, the player suspended for that Javier Morales tackle roughly a month ago, back in the lineup. He gets the game winner for the GOATs. Yeah, big win for Robin Frazier and his crew coming off a disappointing midweek loss where they took the lead and then immediately gave up the tying goal to Vancouver. So Frazier happy to get the victory against Portland over the weekend. Well, two other big wins for some teams out west. FC Dallas keeps rolling to get a 1-0 win over the New England Revolution. And the San Jose Earthquakes, Jay, five games unbeaten, three straight wins at home. They knock off the Houston Dynamo. Uh, let's switch to uh, international action. The United States national team in action on Saturday, the final uh, tune-up before the Gold Cup. They take on Spain. They come away with a 4-0 loss, and a lot of people uh, have a lot of questions about this lineup that was put out on the field. Yeah, Bob Bradley went with a young lineup. Landon Donovan was a scratch. He was sick. Clint Dempsey came off the bench. It was Josie Altidore starting up top with Juan Agudelo, and Tim Ream also started in the back, his New York Red Bulls teammate. But U.S. did not have much of the ball. Spain really dominated. Once they got going, they were moving the ball very well. The questions really are, have become, why did the U.S. play Spain just ahead of Gold Cup? This is something that could potentially hurt their confidence. I tend to disagree with that. I think you play the best teams you can play. You get the most out of the games. It's a learning experience for the guys. But they're going to go into Gold Cup, and when they play Canada, it's not going to look like Spain. Well, Jay, that's exactly what U.S. head coach Bob Bradley said, that they wanted to play the best team they could before this Gold Cup uh, opens up. It opens up for the Americans on Tuesday night against Canada up at Ford Field in Detroit. But the tournament got underway in earnest on Sunday. Two teams with MLS ties in action and some very impressive results for both. Costa Rica got the tournament started with a 5-0 victory over Cuba. Alvaro Sabrio, Real Salt Lake's forward, getting on the board there. Salt Lake fans will be happy to see that. And then Mexico with another 5-0 result right after it against El Salvador. Chicharito with a hat trick. Well, Jay, four more teams in action on uh, Monday in Group B of the Gold Cup. Four teams with MLS ties, including Jamaica. I think that's a team a lot of people mm -hmm. curious to see how they do. And we'll have a full Gold Cup preview on the Monday edition of the Extra Time Radio podcast. And, Jay, we mentioned Chivas USA. We had one of our intrepid reporters and videographers go behind the scenes with the Goats and Robin Frazier. Yeah, there's a three-part series coming out. It's called Four Days with Frazier, where we go behind the scenes with Robin Frazier. As last week, he had a Wednesday game and a Saturday game. The kind of things you have to go through to prep a team in a short week. Obviously, he's a first-year coach, so a lot of interesting things coming out of that, and you'll see that series on the site this week. Well, you can find that in all the latest news and analysis from the Gold Cup on MLSsoccer.com.